Saturday on Denver 7. We're still trying to outguess Mother Nature. An already active wildfire season with more tough days expected. Why state fire officials say they're more prepared than ever. If you're looking for some eco-friendly shopping or a good bargain, ThriftCon might be the one-stop shop for you. When and where you can check it out. And this week's Denver 7 Everyday Hero is actually on four legs, helping heal those who need it most. Good morning. Welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Saturday morning. And we want to start by giving you a look at the stories that will be making headlines today. That's right. Crews in Colorado Springs will continue to work on the Silver Charm fire. Good news here. As of last check, it was 75% contained this morning. The blaze was caused by welding, which is illegal on days when burn restrictions are in place. 500 homes were evacuated during the fire. 120 firefighters responded and 17 acres have burned so far and we have already seen so many fires this year across Colorado and unfortunately that's not necessarily going to slow down heading into summer. That's because we're still in the midst of a drought and snowpack numbers keep dwindling. This is the latest snowpack map released on Friday. Not one of Colorado's water basins is above 100% of normal and all of southern Colorado is only around 65% of normal. If you drive by Elitch Gardens today, you'll see the rides going. Elitch Gardens is hosting its season pass holders for a sneak peek at the park. That's today and tomorrow. The park officially opens to the public next weekend. Officials say it's been a busy off season. They've been planting 8,000 flowers. They've also ordered 100,000 souvenir cups and 200,000 stuffed animals for those midway games. Well, it's really felt like summertime the past couple of days, but today more like spring with temperatures only around 60 degrees. Yesterday we saw areas of patchy blowing dust here across the metro. Good news is this morning that's cleared out significantly and we have a little more moisture in the atmosphere with partly to mostly cloudy skies and some snow falling over higher terrain. A live look this morning over Rabbit Ears Pass. You can see the roadways covered in snowfall with areas of blowing snow, so be careful if you are driving to and from and in and around the mountains with some limited visibility and winter driving conditions. Now, in terms of our future cast through the mid morning hours, the winds already strong this morning, especially into the foothills. We'll continue to see gusty conditions here over the front range and eastern plains, but at least fire danger won't be as elevated as what we experienced yesterday. Those snow showers will continue to taper off as we get into early tomorrow morning, a little more sunshine, but it will stay cool this weekend. Highs tomorrow only in the 50s, but we do have some warmer weather and an 80 degree on our seven day forecast. I'll show you that still to come. Well, it's a concerning trend that frankly Coloradans are getting sick and tired of. Eight new fires sparked on Friday alone, burning at least 35 acres of land all over the state in just one day. And it's been a busy few days for firefighters. Three fires earlier this week prompted evacuations in Boulder County alone. And state fire officials say our wildfire outlook for the rest of the year isn't too great. But there is some good news here. As Denver 7's Christian Lopez reports, Colorado's leaders say they're feeling feeling more prepared than ever. State officials say they're more prepared than ever and add that public awareness is key, especially going into such a dry summer. We've already seen dozens of wildfires break out across the state since the beginning of the year, and this is causing a lot of concern for residents across the state as well as fire personnel. State leaders say that the 2022 wildfire outlook is not looking too good. It is expected to be hot, dry and windy, and the core fire season could start as early as May. So their strategy is to detect the fires early and attack them aggressively. They're also gearing up with new equipment. For a large air tanker, a second large air tanker um, on a four month contract, three type one helicopters, two type two helicopters, two single engine air tankers. We're still trying to outguess Mother Nature and uh, sometimes that doesn't always work out. Make a list. If you do that kind of work ahead of time, then don't live in fear, just live in preparation. State officials say that it's important for everyone to do their part to prevent these fires from happening and to be ready with an evacuation plan just in case. I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. And ahead of what's shaping up to be a very active wildfire season, Colorado lawmakers are taking steps to put the state in the best spot possible to prevent and fight those fires. And a lot of that effort is focused on fighting fires from the air. Last year, the state invested $24 million into buying the state's first firehawk. But as Denver 7's Megan Lopez explains, it will be a while before this new tool can be put to use. We want to encourage you to get prepared for a wildfire. 
It's just about to be Fire Awareness Month in Colorado, a time with Colorado experiencing large fires when a bunch of people with badges will beg everyone to be responsible through FireWise campaigns while they brace themselves. For years, major wildfires have been an unfortunate fact of life in Colorado, and for years the state has relied on the federal government's 44 air tankers to help. But recently, the demand for those assets is getting greater and greater, and we found ourselves um, in situations where we'd be at a large fire needing support from a from an air tanker or a helicopter, and you know it would be in one of the other 19 states in the West. So last year, Colorado lawmakers took matters into their own hands. And it was time to rethink the way we do business. Spending 24 million dollars on a firehawk, a retrofitted blackhawk that can drop a thousand gallons of water and transport a dozen firefighters at. Time. It is a true multi-mission firefighting machine. It's rugged. It was built for battle. But here's the thing, that Firehawk won't be ready for months. In fact, the company retrofitting it in Inglewood hasn't even gotten a hold of the helicopter yet. And then there's a supply chain to contend with. There's a global supply chain issue. We've done our best to pre-order equipment and have it have it on, on hand by the time the aircraft arrives. They're expecting to finally get that aircraft next month and then get to work. It takes anywhere from six to eight months to do that transition into a fire hot. It's not expected to be ready until November or December, so too late for this summer. But that's not the only state effort to fight fires from above. Last year, Colorado signed a contract to have the exclusive use of an air tanker and helicopter for 120 days. This year, and we are announcing, I think, some of our most aggressive uh, efforts as uh, in that plan to date. Along with that contract, plans to expand $20 million in federal funds to extend the contract. Those funds will go to contracts for additional air tankers and helicopters to quickly and decisively respond to fires before they get out of control. The state is hoping they won't have to use them, but building up their aviation arsenal anyway and bracing themselves for a hot, dry summer ahead. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And there is one potential hiccup to that plan. Megan says contracts for these air tankers and helicopters, they're very competitive, pitting Colorado against other states also facing the threat of fire. So while that funding is nice, it really only matters if they can secure the contracts. Bills addressing wildfires are moving forward at the State House. House Bill 1007 would save homeowners money on wildfire mitigation. That's by extending an existing income tax deduction and creating a state income tax credit to reimburse homeowners. House Bill 1379 invests $20 million to protect watersheds and reduce the risk of fire. And House Bill 1111 ensures that homeowners displaced by wildfires will receive fair, fair pay payouts for lost property. Well, coming up, helping patients as they heal one paw at a time. Oh, you get them both, huh? What a good boy. In this week's Everyday Hero, we meet a dynamic duo spending hours brightening the day for others while walking away healed themselves.